It's Patrick from AI Tutor, and we've got another 10 minute topic revision. This time on a pretty boring topic, but everyone's got to do it. So, we're going to be looking at quadratics, which is part of the year 12 algebra topic. So, we're going to jump into this whiteboard. We've got a load of stuff which we're going to talk about when we get to it. But there's a quick note I want to make. In GCSE, you do a shed load of work on quadratics. One of those being how to solve quadratics, right? We can factorize them, we can complete the square, and we can use the quadratic formula. So I'm not going to spend too long in this video talking about all of those things because I'm kind of assuming that as prior knowledge. I more want to talk about the A-level stuff today. Turns out you can also use your calculator at A-level to solve quadratics for you as well. So I'm not going to talk about that now, but essentially, you know, I'm not going to dedicate... I've only got 10 minutes, right? I'm not going to dedicate a lot of time to solving them. The first thing I want to do is talking about sketching them. And I'm actually just going to start off by doing this graph, right? And then talking about the points as we get to them. So, sketch the following graph, indicating its intersections with the axes, its stationary point, and its line of symmetry. Okay, so generally with any quadratic, it's only ever going to look like one of two things. If the number in front of the x squared, so the a in this case, is positive, it's going to be a smiley face. If it's negative, it's going to be a sad face. Done. It's only ever going to look like one of those two things. B doesn't matter, C doesn't matter, it's only the number in front of the x squared. So, okay, well, we know the shape. 2 is positive, it's going to be a smiley face. Cool. Next thing, intersections with the axes. So, this is true for any graph, not just quadratics, but to get the intersections, we set y equals 0 to see where it hits the x, and vice versa. So, let's do that, right? So, when x equals 0, y is going to equal, well, this is the easy one, right? Because that goes to 0, that goes to 0, it's going to be minus 6. We know that it is going to hit the y-axis at minus 6. Let's get the x-intersections. So if y is 0, then it's not quite as simple, is it? We've got an equation to solve. We've got 2x squared plus 4x minus 6 equals 0. How are we going to solve this? I'm noticing that I can cancel 2 from both sides here. If I divide both left and right by 2, I'm going to get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. 0 over 2 is still 0, which makes my life easy. Can I factorize this? Well, I should hope so. So what we're going to get, if I was to add 1 and do the complete opposite of what I'm saying, there we go. If I was to add 3 and take away 1, this would work out because I'd get minus 1x, add 3x to get 2x, 3 times 1 to get minus 3, giving me two intersections with the x-axis, minus 3, and 1. Okay, so now we're actually getting there, aren't we? If I was to kind of pop some axes up here, what do we know? First of all, we know that it hits the x-axis at 1 and minus 3. We know that it hits the y-axis at minus 6, so maybe that could be somewhere like this. So we've got 1, minus 3, minus 6. And given we know the shape of this thing, we've actually got enough to give ourselves a bit of a sketch here. Now, this is going to look like this. I've not exactly got an artist's hand, so uh, bear with me here. That's better than you usually get with me, to be honest, so I'm taking that. Now, we're not done yet, though, are we? We've got the intersections, but we need its stationary point. So that is going to be this old chestnut right here, you know, the thing right at the bottom. In this case, it's going to be a minimum point, right? If, it's, if A was less than zero, the stationary point would be a maximum. How do we do that? We complete the square. So, super quick reminder on completing the square. What we do when we have a number in front of the x squared is the following. We factorize out the number in front of the x squared. Now, I like to just factorize it out of the first two terms. And the reason is, I'm going to end up multiplying this out anyway. So it doesn't really matter if I do the last one because I just end up multiplying it out anyway. Okay, I'm going to do square brackets to really kind of remind myself that this isn't the bracket that I get from completing the square. I am now going to complete the square inside these square brackets, so I'm going to get another bracket. What do we do? We have an x. We add, this should have an x here, and we add a half of the coefficient of the x. So this would be plus 1. This is all going to be squared, and then I need to take away this number squared. 1 squared is 1, so I'm taking 1 away from that. So this thing is equal to this thing. Still got the minus 6 chilling on the outside, and I now multiply everything back out. So I get two lots of x plus 1 squared, 
and then I'm going to get minus 2 and then minus 6. So that is going to be minus 8. Brilliant. Why does this help me get the stationary point? Because I look at this and I say, okay, this thing here is a square, or it's 2 multiplied by a squared number, right? Squared numbers always have to be positive. So the minimum value that this can be, no matter what x is, even if x is minus a billion, I don't square it, it becomes positive. So the minimum value that this can be is 0, isn't it? This cannot be anything smaller than 0. So what is the value of x that makes this thing 0? It's going to be minus 1, isn't it? And then I say, okay, well, when this thing is 0, what is the value of y? Minus 8. So that is the coordinates of our minimum point, minus 1, minus 8. And now the line of symmetry, I'm going to get this, because if you think about it, the quadratic is symmetrical around this point here, right? Which has completely gone off, but you know what I mean. So essentially, the line of symmetry, well, this is going to be x equals whatever this line is here. So the line of symmetry is going to be x equals minus 1, and that is it for this question. Okay, the sketching took way longer than I thought it would, so I need to speed up. The next part is actually something new to A-level, and it's called the discriminant. Essentially, the discriminant can tell you how many solutions a quadratic equation has without actually working those solutions out. And if I have a quadratic equation, then the discriminant is the bit inside the square root on the quadratic formula, the b squared minus 4ac. Super important note quickly, it's only when it equals zero. The amount of students that I have seen trying to do the discriminant when I've got like a four on the right hand side doesn't work, okay? Essentially, if the discriminant is greater than zero, you get two distinct real roots. In other words, solutions of the equation. If it's equal to zero, you get one. And if it's less than zero, you get no real roots. We say real because it turns out that there's something you learn about in further maths called imaginary and complex numbers. So you do have solutions that look like that. Don't worry about that. This just means no solutions to you. Okay, so we can use this discriminant to answer loads of types of questions. An absolute classic is the following. We've got a quadratic equation, but one of the kind of numbers here, one of the constants is unknown, right? So we are, however, told that it has one real solution and we're asked to find k. What do we do? We compare this to an ax squared plus bx plus c. We say, okay, well, in this case, what would the discriminant be? Well, it's b squared minus 4ac. In this case, b is 3, so it would be 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is k. And I know that because this has only one real solution, I look over here and I say, ah, that means that the discriminant must be equal to 0. And now I've got an equation on my hands. 3 squared is 9 minus 8k equals 0. Take the 8k over the other side. Divide by 8 to get k equals 9 over 8. Absolute classic discriminant question. The last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is hidden quadratics. So this is when you've got some absolutely dirty equation and you're like, how do I solve that? But then if you can at least mildly connect that to the kind of components of what makes a quadratic equation, you might be getting somewhere. Look at this equation. Looks absolutely disgusting. But I look at it and I go, okay, well, I've got this kind of like 2 to the x. And then this term here, it's not quite 2 to the x. It's 2 to the 2x. But then I think, wait a minute, indices, right? Could I not write 2 to the 2x as 2 to the x squared? And then I would have 2 to the x squared minus 12 lots of 2 to the x plus 32 equals 0. And now I'm thinking, wait a minute, is a quadratic equation not of that form? Is a quadratic equation not of the form, I've got something, right, some amount of that, I've got some amount of that thing squared, and then I've got a number on the end. Well, that's exactly what a quadratic equation looks like. Something, some amount of that thing is squared and some number on the end. So let's imagine that y was 2 to the x, right? I'm making a substitution. I'm allowed to do that. Then what would this equation look like? It would be y squared minus 12y plus 32 equals 0. That's a quadratic equation. Let's factorize it y minus 8, y minus 4, okay, so I've got two values for y, right, y is 4, y is 8, but remember that y is actually 2 to the x, so 2 to the x is either 4, or 2 to the x is 8, meaning that x is either 2, or x equals 3. That is a hidden quadratic, 
make sure you are always on the lookout for them. They can turn up in so many different ways, ways in which I do not have time to talk about now, but if you would love to check out more, go over to AI Tutor and you will have more than enough practice there. I'm Patrick, 10 minutes is up, ciao.